Cool, cool. Good morning, guys. I'm gonna start walking faster to warm myself up. This is the routine. Zombie art comes, finish my shorts, get the fuck out, lock in my gains, do the Instagram live for you guys. Yesterday we had a problem with split screen video. So adding a person may lose audio. Let's try that today, later on. I don't know if it fixes the problem or what. How'd you guys do today? Today was kind of tricky, for me anyways. Managed to get out of some stocks, made some money. If you overstayed in some stock names like FTFT, you got smoked. Short, that is. Stocks have consolidated for a couple of days. You have to be very careful shorting them, guys. They're great for long buys traders to pick up. If you see a flat consolidation line of a name that has recently been ran, that's a good, you know, you can get in, put a stop, and it can get pumped up again. Some of these stocks have multiple lives. Woo! It's freezing. T2. I fucked that one up, guys. I'll talk about that. Alex is not around, so I posted some PLs on this. Alex is back. I'll stop posting. Basically, we trade the process. Dude, Instagram. This, this phone is so stupid. I gotta keep clicking the screen once in a while. It keeps thinking I'm not around and wants to freeze up. But yeah, we post these PLs not to brag like some of the other guys, but to show you what's, what you can do realistically <clears throat> as a trader. Trading like a $50,000 account. We're not trading like $4 million accounts like these, some of these guys bragging about being down a million dollars and making it back and then how good they are. I never ever want my students, my members, my friends to ever be down that much and then brag about revenge trading to make it back. I'll be able to fuck. That is a surefire way for you to lose all your fucking money. They are lucky they have four million dollars in their account. You do not. You will fucking panic. You will not be able to pay your bills. You will take the loss because you have no choice. Your broker will call you up. The broker will auto liquidate you. Risk management is the holy grail. I cannot stress that enough, guys. The shit that I see on Twitter is shit. I'm so fucking pissed off at the fucking FinTwit world because 2020 was a straight up, the market straight up. Gambling idiots are pumping and dumping to huge Discord rooms. They're not fucking trading, dude. They're bragging about fucking loading, front, front loading a stock, pumping it to 10,000 members. That is not fucking trading. Eventually, 2021, reality is going to be fucking coming, guys. When the shit does not work anymore, when people start to fucking lose money, they're going to bail. And what's going to happen is money is going to flow right back to my pocket, guys. My pocket, Alex's pocket, MIC members' pockets. All going to flow back to us. Money flows from the uneducated to the educated. Pumps and dumps will stop working. When they stop working, you're fucked. One of the big pump and dump rooms been read every day this year for a reason. I'm just scooping up the pieces, guys. You know, you can teach you to do all this. I'm not here to fucking brag. I'm not here to fucking tell you how awesome I am. Like some of these motherfuckers, I hate them. I mean, I fucking hate that attitude, guys. There's a couple types of, there's two types of people in the world, guys. The ones that are humble and the ones that are about to get their ass humbled. And you know what? The fact that you're here listening to me, guys, you guys are taking this shit seriously. Stop fucking chasing these pumps. Learn how to trade for yourself. Put in that stop loss. Fuck, man. I don't understand why you guys are listening to me, but not in the MIC either. You know, we try to make it as simple as possible for you guys to learn this shit. 
I'm looking at some of these guys and it's just fucking brutal. Brutal. They're bragging. The, the worst thing is, like, you make your money, you shut the fuck up. They're fucking bragging about fucking killing sheep, killing their members, bragging about all this shit. When people are blowing up, they're doing a disservice to their people. I just fucking, like, dude, I just can't handle it. I mean, I will let karma handle it, but these motherfuckers are bragging and bragging, and then all their people are fucking losing money. You don't hear anybody making money. Once in a while, you get a fucking idiot that's chasing with a big size and making money, and they're bragging about it. I'm like, dude. Anyways, guys, so we're here to learn. We are here to learn, guys. 2021, it's already starting, in my opinion. The markets are choppy right now. The markets are choppy. They're trapping. Shit is not going straight up, you know, like it used to be. It's something has changed. Even the pump rooms with 5,000 members are not able to move these stocks up. And what's gonna happen is when start people like to lose money. This is a normal cycle, guys. The market's been up for 12 straight years. Bull market, straight up. Look what's going on. I don't wanna look outside the world, but the world's getting to be a fucked up place, guys. The money is going to stop flowing into the markets, guys. I'm telling you guys right now. What's gonna happen is this. You will have huge volatility huge opportunity the ones that are prepared is going to clean up this is what they want they want to kill the world reset the world and what we're going to do we're going to educate ourselves and be a part of that mission i'm not here to fight the world i'm here to work within the boundaries of the rules of the world i'm just laughing at all these fuckers that are killing themselves for other people in terms of pol politics i am not into that politics shit the only politics I know is Benjamin Franklin. I support that $100 bill, and I'm here to teach you how to fucking get the $100 bill, guys. Okay, are you with me, right? Are you with me? We're here to fucking learn to make money, to take care of your family. That is my fucking religion, dude. I'm not here to fucking cost shit, cost trouble. I am I'm not a billionaire. I'm not in a position of power, but you know what, man? I could do my part. So guys, this is the revolution we're in right now, right? We're, and so, you can either fucking team up with a dumbass who are using you for their own purpose or own gain, or you're gonna fucking learn to take care of your family, man. And this is what we're here for, guys. So every week, Alex and I have been doing these walks, Instagram Lives, YouTube Lives, and Tosh tomorrow on Wednesday is doing a webinar, free webinar at 2 p.m. market time. We're doing this shit to help you guys, it shit you guys. We're saying the same shit over and over. Take a look at our fucking PLs every day, man. This is becoming fucking like almost boring, systematic. And the best thing is members are having the same, if not better, trading charts than I do within MIC. The guys at MIC, you guys see that? I post a chart, people, damn, I got the same entries. It works, guys, right? It fucking works. And so each time we're doing this, it builds more people. And I'm telling you, man, MIC is going to take over in terms of when the pump rooms are over, you're going to see it. You're going to be fucking crying. You'll be wishing that you fucking saved your money and get properly educated. Instead of throwing this money to these motherfucking guys who are bragging on the internet, right? But anyways, whoo, a couple of items, a couple of items. Um, welcome to 2021, guys. 2021 every year presents an opportunity in my opinion this is just my guess don't bet on my guess my bet is 2021 shit is gonna hit the fan the market's going to be choppy as hell in my opinion the good times are over for the guys that are buying and holding look at bitcoin bitcoin exhausted itself now it tanked and people are getting pissed off anybody that's chasing bitcoin at 40 dollars i don't know what to tell you man so you think about it logically this is my opinion on Bitcoin. You missed the boat. I missed the boat. Get over it. Even if you bought at fucking 30,000, 40,000, if it goes 100,000, you doubled your money, tripled your money. Whoopie doo. Your $5,000 turns into $15,000. You ain't gonna get fucking rich, man. You ain't gonna get rich. But during that time, the guys that are joining MIC are fucking making money, that money every fucking week, every month. 
and what they learn for the rest of their life. Not just a one stock, one play thing, guys. This is what we're trying to say. Fuck chasing these picks. Stop fucking trying to make someone else rich. Learn to trade and you will be self-sufficient. Instead of getting a fucking handout of a fish, I am teaching you, we are teaching you, MIC is teaching you how to fish for yourself. So when the time comes, look at me, I'm not scared of anything. Power is when you can never be bribed. Money doesn't move me because I can fucking sit down and make money any fucking day of the week. Knock on wood. And I can teach you to do the same. The moment that you are self-sufficient is power. No one can control you. Fuck, man. They can bribe me whatever the fuck they want. They can never bribe me enough. Maybe a billion dollars, but fuck, I don't need that much money, right? <laughs> uh, so this is, this is the revolution we're in, guys. And you know what, man? This is the time for you guys to fucking learn. I'm tearing out. Stop being a fucking... Don't, don't be a lazy ass. This is the opportunity of a fucking lifetime. I love lockdowns, guys. I love lockdowns. You know why? It gives me a chance to work my ass off, to learn new things, to help MIC members. There's no excuse anymore. Before, it's like, oh, I, I, I don't have time to study. Now you have all the fucking time in the world. What the fuck are you doing? Playing Xbox? This is why they released a fucking new PlayStation shit. Because you're, all your dumbasses are fucking scrambling to pay $500,000 to buy this shit. When you could be fucking learning to trade and make a fucking Xbox every day. I make over, I make a fucking like 10 Xboxes every fucking day. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Well, today anyways, right? Yesterday, more. You know, so fuck this shit. You know what the best video game in life is? Fucking trading stocks, man. The best fucking video game is the video game that you are learning a skill for life. So what if you're a level 1000 warrior in some fucking game in Xbox? Whoopie doo, what the fuck, dude? You still won't get laid. <laughs> you're a big badass warrior on fucking Fortnite or whatever. I don't play that game, so I have no idea. You know, <laughs> what's it gonna do? You're gonna walk around, fucking try to pick up chicks with that? Or be a real warrior in real life, dude. The guys are MIC. Trading is like a role playing game, but for reality, guys. I'm telling you right now. You know, I keep telling people this all the time. Level one, level two, you level up. And I'm telling you, man, the moment you fucking make it in trading, it's like unbelievable, guys. You guys, the guys are MIC learning from scratch. When you see the light, guys, tell everybody, right? It's fucking game changer. $200 a day, guys. Aim for $200 a day when you start is life changing. That's 50000 a year. But, but, but that doesn't where it stops. I, I, the reason I say 200 because if you can make $200 consistently, you can start making 300 400 500 1000 2000 5000 10000 100000 It's up to you. Build that fucking bankroll. There's a limit where you reach where you don't need to make any more. Most of you, if you guys make 1000 a day, that's fucking life changing. Even 200 supplemental income is life changing, guys. 200 fucking dollars. I don't know where this rent came from. This rent just kind of pissed me off because I'm seeing the... The chaos out there. I'm, I'm like, dude, people are killing themselves. When when there's an opportunity right in front of their eyes, right? Guys? So it's kind of like, dude, learn a fucking trade. Learn a skill. It doesn't matter what it is. But trading is what made me get there. And that's all I can teach. You know? So I talk about trading a lot because it helped me. I don't fucking know how to play Fortnite. I don't know if I'm not the master at poker. So I'm not going to go around teaching poker. The only thing I can teach is how... I got there, and if and I'm a real motherfucker, man. I came here with nothing, and look where I am. I'm not the best. I'm a normal guy. I drink a lot. I party a lot. I have so many fucking flaws, but if I can make it, you can make it too. Did not go to fucking Ivy League. I did not grow up with a silver spoon. Fuck, I didn't. I grew up with chopsticks, not even a silver spoon. <laughs> My fucking hands and chopsticks. But uh, but you see what I'm saying, right? So that's why I want to get off. I was like, you know what, man? 2021. People always put shit off. This is the. This is the new year, guys. Uh, if you're not fucking going to do it the new year in January, I don't know when the fuck you're going to do it. Get off your fucking lazy ass and do this. All right, so back to education. So I want to talk about easy to borrow names. So this is something that probably not many people even know about or even teach about, okay? So I want to teach because the reason why this is coming up because there's so many stocks now that are easy to borrow. The easy to borrow, so I'll tell you how trading works. In trading, you can either bet that the stock goes up or stocks go down. When you, when you bet the stock go down, we call that short selling. And when you short a stock, you need to first what's called borrow, locate. 
Because you can't just manufacture out thin air and say, I'm going to sell this before I own it. So shorting a stock is basically selling something you do not own. Selling something you do not own. It's like almost like drop shipping, right? You know, I don't own the product. I'm just fucking selling it. And I hope the manufacturer fucking uh, supplies it to me. But the moment that supplier stops, I, I'm fucking, I got to go and supply this. And so I'm betting that when I'm selling stuff, I'm betting that it goes down because I'm hoping to buy it back cheaper at a later time. That's the concept of short selling. It's the, basically, you're selling before you're buying. And when you do that, it, you, you cannot just manufacture shares out thin air. You have to do what's called a stock locate or what's called a borrow. And for small caps, where the float, which is the size of the inventory of the stocks, is very low, it's very hard to borrow. That's why they call it hard to borrow. And so you have to pay a lot of money to locate them. An example is you can pay two cents for a $2 stock. That is basically, so the average is probably like 1%. So there's a 1% fee to borrow the stock, okay? And what happens now lately is there's a lot of stocks that are easy to borrow. The reason they're easy to borrow is they're higher float. They're higher float. You see a 100 million share float of these stocks and they're easy to borrow because there's so many inventory around but then this is this is the thing this is why i like a call i'm the guy that, that fucking made this this acronym funny acronym up it's etb right etb stands for easy to borrow that's when you do not need to pay to locate to locate that because it's so abundant it's everywhere but i when i see etb and i'm i'm a short seller what comes to mind is not easy to borrow it's easy to blow up etb to me stands easy to blow the fuck up you know why i'll tell you the secret guys this is a secret none of you furus are fucking ever gonna tell you the reason a stock goes up is not because <laughs> there are more buyers and sellers which is true there are more buyers and sellers the reason it goes up to crazy lengths is because of a short squeeze and <clears throat> the because if everybody's on the same side of the the, the the stock everyone's buying buy 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 and then when they sell they sell sell, sell. that's why you see the crater when you get short sellers stuck, that's when all shit goes to hell for them and you see these stocks go to $100 a share. Because short seller is the natural bidder. If you are long buys, you bought once and you're holding and you're hoping to sell that shit. So you are actually not the natural buyers, guys. You guys are the natural sellers. Long buys guys are lo natural sellers. Short buys guys are natural buyers because I'm fucking in that stock. I'm looking to exit. I'm bidding that shit. And if you squeeze me, I'm fucked. I'm fighting. I'm fighting with Alex. I'm fighting with other short sellers to to close my position out. In order for a stock to go ballistic, you need to have a bunch of buyers. Where does the buying come from? Finding a sucker to buy your shit at two hundred percent higher is not easy. The guys are bought early, will sell it to you, and then when you bought it, you're like, fuck, I'm trying to flip this shit out. And so that's why a stock without shorts will not squeeze up. It will squeeze up temporarily until all the suckers have been exhausted. And then when the sale comes, boom, it craters. That's why you see these chat rooms are pump and dump, and they're, they, they are pumping socks that have no shorts in it. And how do I tell that's no shorts? Easy. You join MIC, I tell you exactly how many shares are short. You know, so we can actually see all this shit. Now we can see that, hey, this stock is very cheap. This stock is pretty much easy to borrow. Everybody is stuck. Holy shit, what happens? If you break, this is the thing, there's a magical line. And the magical line is usually the high of day, guys. The high of pre-market, the high of the week. Because what happens is everybody gets fucking stuck short. And they're holding this shit until key levels are broken. The key levels I'm telling you right now is the pre-market high or the high of the week, which is the previous day high. Okay? Uh, we, we, we discuss all this with the MSC, but I still want to share you about the easy to borrow, okay? So the bottom line is this is the reverse logic that people don't tell you. For a stock to get squeezed, you need shorts. People always think you need more buyers. Which is true. But where's the buying come from, guys? This is what you got to think. Where's the buying come from? If you are a long buy trader, you already bought. You're just looking to sell. Along with 1,000 other guys 
that are looking to sell. The buying is exhausted already, it's gone. The demand is gone. So where do you come up with the secondary demand? It's from the short sellers. The short sellers are shorting all the way up. They are looking to buy, to cover, to get out. And that's where the short selling squeezes the stock up, guys. So when I see easy to borrow stock, what do I do first? I look at the float. And <clears throat> there's a lot of times that the float is very small, even like five million shares. And for some reason, it's easy to borrow. I'm not going to talk about why is that. That's clearing firm's fault because a lot of times they've done a, re uh, a recent reverse split, for instance. If they did a reverse split, the, the, the float is not accounted for in the algo. You know, the algo, because there's so many shares out there, guys. There's so many stocks out there. You have to have them, you know. They're, they're not updated in real time. The, the share count, the OS count, the outstanding share count, all that stuff. So what happens is some of these slip through the cracks. Okay, when these slip through the cracks, this is where the manipulators take, the, the manipulators and the scammers take advantage. They buy up the whole float, guys. They buy up the whole fuck, fucking float. Because all of a sudden now they just squeeze the fuck out of all the people that are shorting. <clears throat> so float size is very important. So how do you trade easy to borrow or I call it easy to blow up stocks? You look at the float. If you see the fucking float as small, fucking be careful. Put a hard stop. Don't fuck with it. When it Put a hard stop all the time at high of daybreak if you're shorting, guys. Okay, because once that breaks there, you're fucked. You have a massive amount, and I call it deviation from VWAP. Okay, VWAP is the volume weighted average price. That's the price of most of the buying, the average that are buying and selling. So a very good way to see who's trapped is to look at the VWAP. Is the stock above or below? All right, and you know if so. If you are a long bias trader, and you're in at two dollars, and now the VWAP's a freaking. Let me see. If you're in at two bucks and now the VWAP is at four bucks, it means that most of the people bought at four bucks. You are good, man. Why would you sell? You know, you're, you're so, so I call that deviation. The further away you are from the VWAP, the price from the VWAP, the more less likely that you, that you, that stock will ever fucking get back to you. So that's why these stocks, so they basically run like this, guys. Short squeezes keep happening. If it keeps grinding, you're, the short sellers are dead because they, they trap, they let them in, they trap, so it, it keeps stair stepping up. The moment, this is the, this is the signal for the top guys, is when a parabolic happens. When the fucking broker buys everybody in. That's why you see, because it's not, it's not controlled anymore. The moment the, the top comes, when all of the dumb shorts have, died they covered when there's no more buyers right that's what i'm saying it's all supply and demand and but the key thing is this guys this is what i'm going to reiterate again people always think that the, the key buyers are longs no the key buyers are shorts guys think about that if you're long you're looking to sell you already bought you already bought unless you're greedy ass and keep buying 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 but most of the guys that bought moms and pops and grandmas they're looking to sell they bought already they pop it up they're looking to sell so Longs are natural sellers. Shorts are natural buyers. Because they kept shorting. They want to buy back. And so the moment that there's no more sellers in the game, I mean no more buyers in the game, that's when the stock hits the plateau at the top. Because everyone's trying to buy both the long, but most of the time the crazies are the short covering. So when people ask you, when you say, who the fuck is a dumbass buying $100 when it was like $10 last week? It's the shorts getting covered. They're forced to cover before they blow up. They just max pain. They're fucking dead. The brokers liquidate them. And so the moment that it hits where every short is covered, boom, it drops down. Because there's no more buyers. Who the fuck is buying at $100 a share when it was a fucking $10 last week? Ain't no longs. A few stupid ass longs. But the main, the main people buying are the trapped short sellers. And that's why easy to borrow is a very dangerous thing. Okay, when you talk about easy to borrow, it doesn't have to be easy to borrow. It could be price a million shares availability at two millis. So basically 0025. 
which is essentially free. Basically, anything cheap, guys, anything fucking cheap under one penny is a cheap locate. And that's how people blow up. So when I look at Easy Borrow, the first thing I look at is, so the process the MIC teaches, okay? Very quickly, when I see a scanner, boom, a stock move up, I type it, I type it to Finviz, I look at the shorts. I mean, not shorts, the float, to see what the float is. I type it into my my trading app, app to see the availability of the short locate borrows. If I see easy to borrow or some fucking a million shares at two million, which is essentially free, I'm like, holy fuck, let's take a look at it again. I do the filings, I look at the filings to make sure there's no dilution, all that, all that good stuff. But easy to borrow is fucking a deadly proposition. Because sometimes you can, when it's easy to borrow and it's a low float, like five million shares, and then you look at the volume, you're like, what the fuck? It's 20 million shares traded today. And it's still easy to borrow. That's because the algo is fucked up. The algo meeting, the shorts, um, the clearing firm algos. Because um, like what I said, dude, they probably did. So when, when that happens, I usually look and sure enough, they recently did some sort of forward split, reverse split or some sort of split. And that's how you have all these anomalies where how can you have an easy to borrow locate? And people are trading and shorting more than the float. And that's how you get these crazy ass ramps, guys. So, easy to borrow, how do you fucking trade that? If you are a long bias trader, that is your meal ticket. When you see that shit, check for the dilution. If there is no ATM, if there's no shelf that's being sold, you're like, holy shit, dude, this is setting up for something. So what happens is the, the manipulators, you know, using an algo, whatever the fuck they do, they run it up and they fucking drive it down and then shorts think that it's a broken stock. And so they hammer, they wishing that bounces back up. So when it starts moving up, they're scaling in. Little they know, the fucking float is five million and the stock is trading 50 million. They're dead. Some guy just locked up the float. When they say they locked up the float, they bought the whole float. Okay, it's a, usually a cheapo play. And that's how you get stocks like Bingo, BNG and all those go from fucking 50 cents to eight bucks and stupid shit like that, guys. Okay, and so that is basically easy to borrow. And that's why we joke about easy to blow up. So uh, there's a lot more to this, guys. Uh, you probably have to watch this video like maybe five times to understand this. Uh, join MIC, we have all this on video. But the key is to float rotation and look at the float, guys. Woo! Any questions there? <laughs> Any questions there? Let me see, let me take a look at the comments here. So we have a process, guys. The process is a check and balances and a bunch of rules that keep you safe, okay? And so basically, I keep taking this. Half of the work is picking the right stock to trade, okay? If you pick the wrong stock, you'll be fighting all the time. Let me see if we can get anybody on split screen. If not, guys, I'm gonna end it very sweet and short here. Any questions, guys? I'm gonna take questions here because. I'm afraid to go split screen because yesterday was an audio issue. And if there's an audio issue, I'm, I'm just gonna bail out. Once again, guys, you a lot of these videos, these words may seem like a foreign language. Trading is like a foreign language. And so sometimes you have to watch it over and over to understand. There's a lot of nuances, guys. And then, you know, when you're starting out, you watch a video, you, you may understand 10%. And then maybe three months down the road, re-watch that video. There's a lot of nuances to go, oh shit, I didn't pick that up the first time because you didn't know what to do, right? But trust me, guys, three months, that's that's what I think. Three months is it's basically the bare minimum that you should invest your time and education because after three months, like foreign language, you immerse yourself. And that's why kids are so good at foreign languages and adults are not. Good question. How do I know what stock is easy to borrow? So, there's a so I use DOS Trader, but other people can use Trade Zero. They got other people can use in, um, in, interactive brokers, and then those applications will tell you how many shares are available to short and at what price. So, the trading application does that. If you're using a Mary Trade or Robinhood, you're fucked. <laughs> you're coming to the market with a fucking pellet gun. 
and you are so blind. You like that movie? Uh, what was that movie? Uh, <laughs> that fucking Netflix movie, Bird, Bird or something? Uh, fucking Bird Box or yeah, Bird Box. You're fucking trading blind, guys. So do not be cheap. Some things that I used to be cheap about when you're starting out is level two. If you sh if you're not training with level two, fuck, pay that shit, man. Pay that shit for level two, guys. Learn how to use a level two. But a lot of people, when they first find a level two, they they, they they fuck up. So too many tools is a bad thing too, unless you know how to use the tool. If I gave a fucking monkey a hammer, <laughs> he, would take, he wouldn't know what to do with the hammer. He might use that hammer and hit himself in the head until he figures out, oh fuck, this hammer is fucking painful. So level two is just like the fucking hammer, guys. If you use it effectively, it works great. If you use it incorrectly, you will hurt yourself. Same thing with this easy to borrow information. Easy to borrow information is just another metric that can help you. It's not a, it's not a fucking Bible. It's not fact. It's another piece of information to add to your detective work. I always say it, paint the picture, guys. When you trade, we have videos on this. Paint the picture of the trade. Understand why the stock is up. If I do not understand why the stock is up, I'm very hesitant to enter the stock. So I figure out, is it a pump? Why is it up? If you don't know what the fuck's going on, we're like, why the fuck are you getting in, right? It's pure gambling. Or you can enter but with smaller size. I always like to paint the picture. And so if the picture is, okay, shit, they're turning all this to get people to get trapped because it's easy to borrow, that's another picture too. And so you look at the key levels, certain key levels that break, then it fucking goes ballistic. That's why you need to stop, start putting hard stops. All right. What else, guys? Uh, maybe I, a couple more questions, and then I will bring one person on if you want. If not, we'll end it here and get back to uh, MIC Help. <laughs> Standard deviations of VWAP, that's another thing, too. Basically, I call it deviation, how further away it is. And so, the further away the, the VWAP is, you know, it's going to take a long time to unwind. I call it unwinding the, the position. If you're stuck, you have to unwind. All right, I'm gonna take one last question, which is a good question, overcoming fear. How do you overcome fear? Fear comes from the unknown, guys, the unknown. When you are, when I am, because every time you enter the stock and you're fearful, that's because you're thinking you're gonna blow up, you're gonna lose a lot of money. How do you overcome that? Before you get in is when you are most clear-minded. That is when you're not Married to the stock, you have no position, so you're, you're, you're logical. You're not emotional. So during that time, plan your entries, plan your exits. And people don't understand, exits include two things. For a profit and for a loss. So for a loss, we call that a stop. So before you enter the stock, you, know, you should know ahead of time where you're going to take the loss. So put in that hard stop, man. If you're not putting in the hard stop, don't fucking trade. Simple as that. And you also need to know where you take the profit. Because what's gonna happen is this. So many times you're in the money, but you're not planned to take the, the, uh, the gain. Because you didn't plan this before you got in. You become emotional. You're like, holy shit, I'm up so much. Instead of taking your, the gains off the table, you just keep adding. You keep adding, you're like, fuck, I'm already cushioned. Next thing you know, you turn a big winner into a big loser. And, and so that's how you do it. You fucking pre-plan before you get in and place the fucking stop. If I know exactly how much I'm gonna, I am going to lose before I even enter the stock, why should I be scared? If I'm still scared, it means I am size too large. Size the fuck down to a comfortable position, place in the hard stop, and then you should never be fearful. And I'm telling you, in trading, nothing is 100%. I could give you the best rules in the world, but there'll be outliers and one-offs, like hitting a 20 blackjack hand, and thinking you won because you're all in. The, the dealer pulls a 21, a one outer, you're fucked. That is trading, guys. That's why you always need to put in a hard stop. Always predefine your risk. If I predefine a risk and I know that I can only lose $100 in this trade, why are you scared? If you're still scared, size down. So you lose 50 bucks. And, it, and if you're still scared, guys, trading is not for you. Maybe you should become a fucking pacifist, a vegan uh, eater, fucking go into a monastery. 
and fucking <laughs> feed the fucking rabbits or some shit because trading is not for you. You have to be comfortable with taking a loss, guys. Be comfortable with taking a controlled, manageable, small loss. That's why when you do uh, martial arts, the first thing they always teach you is defense, like judo, like all that. They teach you first how to fall before they teach you how to strike. You need to be able to fall without hurting yourself. Sports, man. Super Bowl is coming up. You know what team's gonna win? Usually the team with the best defense wins. Defense wins. And that's what today was for. Guys, I talked about in the room today for me was defensive trading. Because when I woke up today, there was not many, not many obvious big setups that I like. The ones that were set up like TTOO, the range was only 20 cents. So it was iffy, so I, I did not size up on that. So today I told my guys, I am playing defensive. And being defensive, I still made five and a half thousand bucks in one hour. Fuck, dude. That's more than I made as a fucking engineer when I graduated. You know, we can do this every day. When the opportunity is right, I will strike. Like yesterday, I made 12 grand. You know, today I made five and a half thousand so far. So, you know, man, it's, these are small numbers relatively to the guys that are doing $100,000 a day. But those guys have $4 million accounts. This is a $50,000 account, which is mimicking you guys. Woo. All right, guys. I'm going to take off now. Tomorrow, Tosh is going to... Hey, Tosh, give your number. I'll do this again. I'll do this, guys. I'm feeling I'm feeling happy. <laughs> uh, text Tosh. Tosh, where are you, man? Text Tosh. Text Tosh. Uh, what would she text? Uh, <laughs> a monk. M-O-N-K. Because people are afraid of losing money, right? You really, if you're afraid of me fucking losing money, become a monk. Text monk. And I'll, any new members that have not joined... We'll get you join the first month for half price. 97 bucks, guys. This is unplanned, but fuck it. Tosh, if you're around, someone's around, text Tosh's number. I'll, I'll stick around. Text Tosh Monk. And you want to fucking learn, guys. I'm telling you right now, man. Even a monk wants to make money. Fucking those robes ain't cheap, man. Those robes ain't cheap. <laughs> Organic food is fucking expensive. I'm telling you right now, man. It's very expensive to be healthy. Being a monk is very expensive. You know how much that shit costs? <laughs> it's cheaper to go to McDonald's. <laughs> so, even if you're a monk, guys, text Tosh, 97 bucks. We'll give you half off just for today. Only today. Only today. If you text Tosh, the first month, 97 bucks, guys.